I'm Chris, a self-taught web developer. And today I thought I'd just show you how to implement this quite cool um, sort of text over image um, using a background sort of linear gradient overlay, I guess, um, over any images. So as you can see, it sort of just makes text a lot more readable. So this is an example I found on Reddit. I think it's on sort of Spotify. Um, we can see Discover Weekly. It's, it's a bit difficult to see with some of the, the sort of the lighter background colors on that image. Um, whereas as soon as you add that linear gradient um, overlay, you can see the text really pops out um, and it doesn't sort of distort the image too much. It, it kind of makes it look okay, it may be even better. Um, obviously the, the text now really can be seen, obviously, so the difference in sort of the contrast as well, um, certainly a lot more accessible. Um, and yeah, quite a cool effect if you ever need to sort of put image or, or text over an image. Um, so I'll show you how to do that now, actually, um, just using some HTML and CSS. So I've opened up a new sort of set of files in Visual Studio Code. And then if I just move this over uh, to the other side, we can see um, what I'll do is sort of start off with the, the boilerplate of the HTML, link up our style sheet, and then we'll just create an example of this. And you can sort of see the difference between the two. Um, obviously over here, you've got the background linear gradient if you just want to copy and paste it. Um, it is quite cool and I won't take claim for this. I think it was somewhere on a, a Reddit post. I found it. Um, yeah, must have been, uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead anyway. So if I just, uh, sort of do a bang and then hit enter, we've got our boilerplate. Um, and just before I do anything else, I'm just going to link our style sheet, which I've already got. Um, so let's just do styles.css. And then all we want here is a div with a class of wrapper. And then inside that, we'll just do a P tag with class of text. Um, and I'll just put sort of image over text like that as the example. Um, so this div will contain our, our image. We'll, we'll put that as a background URL property. And then the text, of course, we'll just center that um, inside. So perhaps we can do that now. Um, so let's see, let's just do wrapper. And we'll give that a position of relative, um, a oops, width of let's say 500 pixels and height of the same 500 pixels. Um, and I think that might be all we need for now. Um, so I'll just hit save. And well, of course we actually need the sort of the image itself. So I'll do background. And we're gonna do some shorthand properties here. So obviously Background has a number of different properties like background repeat, background position, background image, let's say. Um, so we'll start with the image, so URL. Um, and we can just pop in a URL here. So I've actually got one from pexels.com. So I think they're sort of open source images that you can use free to download. Um, so I found this one, which has, it's sort of quite a white image. Um, so obviously if we, let's say overlay, uh, you know, that text across here, we won't be able to see it too well, but hopefully with the, the gradient, we'll be able to see it a lot better. Um, so I'll just copy image address and just pop that in there and paste and save. And actually what I'll do now is because I've got live server as one of my installed extensions. Um, so if you don't have that, you can just search live server on Visual Studio Code. Um, uh, this one, Ritwick Day, I think it's got almost well, over 18 million downloads. So it, it's certainly trustworthy. Um, and then on, well, certainly Mac, it's Command L and O. Um, or Windows, I guess it's Control. And that just opens up the live server and we're sort of ready to go here. So we can see we've got our image and then our text. Um, and for now, let's just center that. So I'll just put sort of margin, margin uh, zero auto, just so it's centered um, sort of left and right. And then top and bottom, we don't mind too much about now. So. With the background URL, um, potentially a few more properties we might want to add. Um, and because we're doing this sort of all in line and, and shorthand, um, we can put no repeat for the repeat. We can put center and then um, cover as well. So centers the position and cover. Um, I'd have to remember sort of what that is. So let's say background dash. Um, oh, size. Yeah, it, it's cover. Um, and then center is the position. So. Anyway, it's just a lot quicker rather than having four different background properties, you can put them all on this one. Um, and there we go, there's our image, as we can see from over here. So next, what we'll do is we'll actually just style the text. So I'll just put that dot text for the class. Um, let's just give it a font size, font size of two rem. Um, there we go. 
um, text transform, I'll just put it to uppercase, just so we don't have to change it into the HTML. Um, and actually I just want to use a quick font, so just something a little bit nicer. So I'll just use Google Fonts and hit enter. Um, and I think I've got one sort of saved here already. Um, feel free to, to grab any font that you like. Yeah, so I'll just use this B Vietnam Pro. So I'll import and I'll just take all of that and we can just literally put it at the top of our style sheet here um, as an import. And then all I need is this font family. And then if I add that here on the text, just hit save, we should then see we've got our, our font there now displaying rather than um, the browser default. Cool. Um, so I guess we kind of just want to sort of put it centered and then down towards the bottom. So I'll just put position absolute root, um, top, let's just do 80%, left, we'll do 50, and hit enter. Uh, and that's obviously going over. So um, I'll do width uh, 100%, that's across the lot. And, oh, we just need to translate it because um, obviously we're doing um, top 80, left 50. Um, let's see. Top 80, 50. Um, that should be okay. And then maybe it's the margin. Is there an auto? No. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's take that width off. Okay. Well, that's fine for now. Um, we'll leave it like that. Um, oh, maybe it's, let's see, it's translating this and then width and a hundred percent. like so. No, no, that's going off that way now. So maybe that should be 50 and 80. Okay. Why is that? So I'm just trying to work out why is it not centering? Obviously that's all part of the, the fun here. Um, instead, let's just actually text align in the center and there we go. I'm just give it a top of 80%. 80%. There we are, just so it's at the bottom. Uh, it's a lot quicker than trying to do all the transform and, and translates. Um, okay, so we've got our text, and as you can see, actually, I'm just going to make the, the font weight uh, weight a little bit bigger. So I'll just do 900 as the, the max, just so we can really see. We've got our text, and obviously, black on obviously the black image is a little bit difficult to read some of these letters. And then the same if I change that to white. So I'll just do color FFF. I just need to give that a hashtag for sort of the hex code. You can see it's really a lot more difficult to read here. Um, so here's where our overlay is going to come into effect. So all we need to do is just select that wrapper and we just need to give it a pseudo element of before. So that's two um, colons and then before. And then what we want to do is just give it a content um, sort of, of a blank um, here or a blank string. Um, and actually, as you can see, that the ID is kind of spelling it out for us, but a position of absolute. And then um, we want to give it a width of 100% and a height of 100% as well, just so that covers um, the full div that it's in, so this wrapper component. Um, and if I just do, let's say, background uh, color red, we'll just be able to see there's now this full overlay um, that will actually just set as a linear gradient. Um, so we can do that here. So we'll do background and linear gradient. Um, and for linear gradient, you can sort of provide, I think, degree values um, or percentages, and then obviously the colors are, are sort of the different breakpoints. So we're going to go from sort of bottom to top in terms of darkness, um, just like the, the image here. So we can actually just copy this. So we'll just do, was it zero degrees? Um, is that a semicolon or is it a? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, they're using hex codes, so I'll just use copy that. Um, so that's I think six zeros one, two, three, four, five, six, and then two eights, and that's at 30%. We want that to come in, and then the next one is six f's, one, two, three, four, five, six, and four, four, and then that comes in at 100%. Um, and if we hit enter, we should then be able to see we've got our linear gradient here. And just to show that working, I'll take this off and hit save. We can see that that white text really ineligible, um, and then 
much better with the gradient. And then the same goes for black as well. Uh, see if I put zero, 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 we can see difficult to see. And then, um, well, actually, I guess, yeah, you'd have to change the linear gradient to sort of a white overlay. Um, but I guess this, this is an example for, for white text. So I'll, I'll stick with that. Um, but you get the idea that you're obviously offsetting um, sort of the color of the text and sort of putting the opposite. So white text will do a darker background as the linear gradient. Um, but really, it's sort of night and day uh, in terms of eligibility here um, for that. So I guess, yeah, that's, that's sort of the simple example. Um, what I'll do is I'll leave this code and obviously the, the simple boilerplate HTML in a repo below. Um, and feel free to, to use this in your own project. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Cheers.